Okay, hello everybody and welcome back to episode 2 of the Discord JS tutorial. I'm going to go straight into it today, I've got a little bit of stuff to cover. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and very briefly set up a uh, GitHub page, uh, you know, Git, Git repository for this uh, sort of stuff. So I've already created the repository, you can go do that there by typing, uh, pressing this button up here in the top right. You will need a GitHub account, of course, you need a repository and do all this stuff. I'm going to go ahead and use basically this sort of stuff and we're going to go into discord bot we're going to open the git bash we're going to i don't know why i copied that we're going to initialize the repository on branch master Oh, lovely. Oh, lovely. And we want this. And get push origin into master. Username and the password, and it should have pushed into it, I believe. Hooray, right, there we go. Okay, right. So we now have all the information, all the stuff, all the files, everything's good. So we now have a lovely a repository will set up with all of the code which you guys can go ahead and look at as we uh, as we go what i'm going to do is the master f the master branch is just going to i'm going to probably try and put them into different episodes uh, so the different code changes and everything is going to be in different episodes so you guys can uh, see what's going on there so the first thing we're going to do is while we're in here if you're ever um editing your bot and you have it hosted on somewhere and you don't want to affect that while you're posting to GitHub. So say for example, you have a Heroku um, account with the bot being hosted on that platform. Uh, you and your, you have it on automatic um, pull from the master branch and you want to save code to GitHub. Uh, you don't want to save it to the master branch, of course, because it's code that's still being worked on. So you would make a different uh, branch. So we're going to go ahead and check out two. Uh, we're going to select Discord bot. And we're going to create a new branch. And we're going to call this, I'm going to call this episode two and that has set our branch i believe to episode two as you can see here in the uh, source control button uh source control menu on the side okay so we can go ahead and continue working on this so what i want to do in this episode i believe is i guess start with some sort of uh command handling Oh, you'll have to excuse me. Uh, yeah, I want to start on some sort of command handling so we don't have uh, all these if statements cluttering up the uh, message event. The reason we do this is because essentially we can have different files for the... Um, uh, different files for the... Uh, for the, the each of the different commands. And then we can have things like uh, adaptive, um, I guess, help commands and stuff like that. And we can also have... Uh, things like shortened versions of commands, aliases of commands, uh, and all that sort of stuff, all the cool stuff we want to do. Um, and that is done using a command handler, which will replace uh, most of this stuff, if not all of this stuff here. Not this stuff, this stuff will probably stay. So uh, we can go ahead and get go ahead and get right into that, I guess. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to, of course, well, now we're on a different branch, we can safely delete this. And what I want to do is I want to set up a couple of uh, return setups, or uh, return um, conditions, I guess. So we're going to say if not message dot content dot starts with oh it's msg my bad um, message dot content dot starts with. So you know what? I am going to rename uh, the ms the uh, message variable in the arrow function to message. Uh, because that's what I'm used to using, so I'm just going to use that. Uh, we're going to prefix in here, and 
Oh, prefix or message dot author dot id double equals client dot user dot id. So basically, what this will do is if the uh, message content starts with the pre if the message content doesn't start with the prefix or the message author ID is uh, the same as the client user ID so it will ignore um, messages sent by the uh, bot then we can go ahead and return that uh, we're going to want to set up arguments so we're going to use a constant uh, arguments is message dot content dot slice which is a string function we're going to say prefix length to remove that and then we're going to uh, split those so create the an array with uh, by splitting that and we're going to use a space uh, what next next I think we want to um, make sure that we're getting the correct command uh, I guess all the time pretty much so we're going to use another constant we're going to call this command and we want to args dot uh, shift to lowercase and of course this is a function so it needs a set of parentheses uh, next we're going to if the uh, wait actually we don't need that because we have all of our stuff already there um that means basically I'll give you an example of what that means so if if we were doing this without the command handler we can say if command uh, triple equals ping message dot channel dot send pong uh, I'll put so we call on there and we will uh, launch oh, node uh, what was it called ages.js watch the bot and then we can go into bomb crater our server i'm going to say ping and it reply pong so that's basically what this uh this com uh, this um code does here so essentially i'll go over it again we have the return conditions, which is if the message doesn't start with the prefix or the message was sent by the bot. And then we say uh, the arguments is the content sliced with the prefix length uh, removed from that. So it basically removes the first, in this case, two um, characters from the string that we sent. So that would be the, uh, the message that we sent. So that would be the A exclamation mark. Then uh, we split that remaining text with a space. After that, we get the command, which is basically shifting all of the arguments to uh, lowercase, and that essentially gets the first uh, element from an array. So that will be the actual command name. That will be the first thing that comes into the array. And then if we have multiple arguments, of course, they won't be affected by the shift. So that's good. That's exactly what we want. And then of course we could do other commands like uh, else if hello world, for example, we can do all that stuff from last time. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to make a new directory inside here and it's going to be called commands. In this commands folder, we're going to have our first command. We're going to call this ping.js. So this is a standalone um, command file and we will be able to basically require that file and then read from the uh, stuff and execute it as and when we need. So first thing we're going to do is set up uh, exports. So essentially in this module there will be a set of exports in every command module, uh, which is every command file, there will be a list of, uh, I guess, um, a uh, list of data points which essentially will allow us to um, get the name, the description, what the command actually does, any aliases or aliases of that command. So we're going to go ahead and set that up. Module exports 
with an, uh, sorry, just a normal equals. And we're going to say name and call this ping. The description, we want to give it a description. Uh, we're going to give uh, uh, send uh, test bot awareness. You know, you can pretty much say whatever you want. And next in the object, we're going to say the uh, execute. So this is what the execute is going to do. We're going to say we're going to give it the message. We're going to give it the arguments and we can send this via the command handler, which we'll do in a minute. So the message and the arguments we will send over. I'm just going to send uh, Discord uh, just in case we need that. I don't think there's anything else we need to. You know, what? I, we don't need that for the moment because this uh, command doesn't actually use uh, the Discord thing in any way, shape or form. We're basically just going to say message dot channel send. And we're going to say pong. Poing? No, pong. There we go. And put a semicolon there. Uh, what I'm also going to do is give it some. Actually, I'm going to put that in front here. I'm going to give it Elias. I'm going to say Elias P. That'll do. So that's the command set up. And then there are a couple of things we will need to do next. So what I'm going to do, it's because I don't have it. I'm going to real quickly close the bot. I'm going to uh, install the file system, which I don't think I already have. Um, do I already have FS? Oh, I do. Okay, right. Oh, that, that's that's just added it. Mm, spat out a load of hours. Errors. Blech. And of course, in the package JSON, we also now have the file system thing. What I'm also going to do is say discord.js. Uh, and I'm going to say, oh, I don't know what the version of discord.js is. Oh, okay, so the version of discord.js that I'm using is 11.3.0. You can find that by doing npm help, I found out. Uh, don't worry about the anything else really for now. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so back where we were. The next thing we want to do is, uh, of course, require uh, file system equals uh, require fs. And then we can go ahead and... Uh, we're going to basically create a new uh, Discord collection, which will essentially give us a, uh, a nice set of uh, commands that we have in the commands folder over here. So what we're going to do is just get rid of this. Oh, not all of that though, just that, thank you. Const commands, um, we're going to call this, actually we can just say, I think we have to give it, we can just say client dot commands new discord collection yes so we'll basically create a new collection uh, which is client dot commands um discord client i think that's everything we need for now okay um what else do we need? So essentially we're going to want to uh, read the command files and then insert it into the uh, collection. That's essentially what we want to do next. So we're going to say constant command files, file system dot read file, sorry, read directory and I think we want to sync it uh, in mean, synchronization rather uh, and then commands and then for oh for each there we go um right at for each we want to command files dot for each and for each element which we're just going to call, uh, we're just going to call it E for short. 
shortness client dot commands dot set e dot name and then e and I believe that should populate this here. If not we can do uh for each file oh, actually no because we need to uh require we need to do interplay to strings here so we'll say commands file oh uh, e sorry and then we'll say command dot name and then command like that so basically what this does is sets a new item in the collection uh, and then the key is the command name. So this is the key that we want. I think it should give, no, okay, maybe not, but uh, this is the key that we want. And this is the um, the value sort of as the uh, exported module that we want. So let's just recap on what everything does. So you've got the arguments and the command and then we're creating a new collection we are finding all the files using the file system and then read directory we are then for each uh, element in this command files array which has been created uh, we want to uh, require the command and then basically read the command dot name which we have the module exports here which is ping and then the actual command uh, thing itself. So that's all the information we need, I believe. Um, so that should be everything. Now what we can do is if we come down here, if command ping, and then we can say client commands command get uh, we want to get ping dot execute dot sex yes dot execute if I can spell execute that'd be nice with uh, message arguments or args and that should be that I'm just gonna put colons and everything and we should be good to go so let's go ahead and launch the bot actually you know what I'm gonna do clear and we'll launch the bot now and then we should be able to do ping and it will return pong so lovely um, and now we have a lovely uh, command handler, very easy, very nice to set up. Okay, so that's essentially what all of this does. Uh, all of this will be, of course, on the GitHub repository. And uh, that's all pretty much good to go. Uh, one thing I do want to do uh, uh, in this episode, just to get like sort of, I want to try and stick two things, two things per episode. Uh, so the next thing we're going to want to do, I guess today, we'll start on events. Um, I'm kind of making this up as I, as I go along with what the setup is, I have a loose idea. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open the docs and decide which event we're going to want to look at today. Uh, let's go to clients and events and I think what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to look at the message delete event. So uh, if you want a bot that logs when people delete messages so that um, moderators could still see if people have deleted messages and if it's like against the rules then they can ban them then this is what we're going to want to do so we're going to say client dot on and we're going to say um, message delete the thing we want to send into that is the message and uh, that will look a bit like this so let me go on right uh, 
we want to make it look kind of nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, message. Oh, sorry, constant, new constant variable, or new constant, constant, but you know what I mean. Uh, we're going to say uh, embed equals new discord dot rich embed. We don't want a semicolon. Um, so essentially what embeds are, are they they're the uh, cool looking things that you see all of the time, uh, which look a bit like this. These are embeds. So essentially you have fields, each you can put in, uh, data into, you can also put timestamps and stuff, um, like timestamps here, and other information, that sort of stuff. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to say embed, oh we don't even need to put that, so we can say just simply dot um, add field a user deleted message or actually even better we can say um, message dot author dot dis display name I think we can do that message to author display name let me check the docs real quick because I keep forgetting which way around this goes um, message dot author Turns a user, and then we want the uh, display name. No, we can't do that. Uh, could we do dot member? Hmm. What can we do? Username dot tag. We'll do dot tag. Tell you what. Uh, display names. We'll get into. They are a guild member object. We won't worry about those for now. Uh, until until later on. Um, we want to add a field, and we're going to say uh, this member deleted a message. Uh, the next thing we're going to want to add is uh, the message content, which we just put there. And uh, in fact, what we'll do is we'll do a bit of error trapping here. So we'll say content m content is a variable, and then we'll go to here var content equals m dot content uh, message dot content and and then if m content m content equals I could not find any content this may have been an image post uh, might as well do for now. And then we'll say add field uh, user ID user ID is and then we'll say message dot author dot ID. After that, um, so we'll say message dot channel dot send and then the embed object note very very big note here if you call your embed something other than embed so you call it delete embed then you will need to do something a bit like this so the embed and then the actual name of the embed but if the embed is called embed then then it's all good I guess we can go ahead and save that and we will restart the bot what we're going to do then is go to Discord, wherever Discord is, there it is. We're going to say. And then if I delete my message. Oh, interesting. M content is not defined. Hmm. Oh, okay. What did we do wrong? Oh, I called it content, not M content. Of course it did. Um. I delete a message here. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. So I deleted the message, and as you can see, Vex1101 deleted a message. Hi. The user ID is that. Pretty straightforward stuff. Um, so we can go ahead and give this a color as well. If I go to here, I can say dot set color 
and we will give it a string with a hex value in it. Uh, let's go to color picker. And let's say for all of my, hmm, you know what? For all of my, yeah, let's do that. So all of my um, delete messages are gonna be red. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna give it a bit of a darker red. Am I? Yes, I am. Restart our bot. We can put in hello and then go away. Delete the message. And as you can see, the color is now red. Go ahead and put a timestamp in there as well if you want to. We'll say set time stamp. And uh, we'll say new date. And then dot set footer. Um, and automated log by. Aegis, or in fact, we can say something cool like uh, Aegis delete event. Sounds good to me. Let's restart the bot again. We'll say hello, delete the uh, message, and there we go. So we now have a time, which is uh, this time will change. Um, for people, so if they're not in GMT, it will change. And then we have the edges delete event footer here, and their content. I deleted a message. They use ID as this. If you want to send it to another channel, so say for example you have a log channel where all this information goes to, you will need to get the channel through the ID. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the channel ID right here, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, var. Uh, we're going to call this log channel raw ID. I'm going to put the raw ID in there. And then what we need to do is we need to, uh, well, we don't need to, but actually, no. Yeah, we don't need to. So we do need another variable, however. So I will call it uh, log channel equals message dot guild uh, dot channels dot get and we can go ahead and say um, raw ID so what does this do essentially the log channel variable is now linked to a message dot guild so this is the the guild the message was sent in of course and we have the channels uh, this is a collection like the collection we've seen up here except this one is auto automatically generated by uh, discord and the API um, so we have the channels property or the, the channels um, collection of that guild and then it gets the log channel raw id which is this snowflake here oh there we go you might want to do that to make it look like an actual there we go uh, if you don't know the id and you want to find the name or something uh, you will have to uh, dot find and then so it will be something like dot find um, name log channel like that or it would be like that uh, but we have the ID so it's all good so we can go ahead and actually we need to change this real quick we need to say this will now become the log channel dot send embed restart this and we'll send a message here delete the message and the message is sent here and would you believe it I deleted a message called adfafa the user ID is this and it's all good it's all working absolutely fine so in this episode just to recap real quick we learnt about new events and how to use them uh, embeds we learnt about finding channels and we also learnt about the uh, command handler of course if you have multiple commands you can just do else if command uh, hi for example and then put the uh, command get uh, hi execute all that sort of stuff 
and I will need to put that back there. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you have any questions, please let me know down below. And uh, as always, please do take care of yourself and others. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Adios.